The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer is book three of 52 for my 52 book challenge this year where I'm reading a book a week. If you want to join me in reading 52 books this year or you want to read a book every other week, two books a month, that'd be 24 books this year, or you want to read a book a month, which would be 12 this year, any one of those choices is way better than the average U.S. adult is actually reading and completing a book in America, which is about five books. So come and join me. I have my reading list posted at GrahamCochran.com slash 52 books, five, two books. There's no opt-in. It's just if you want to see the eight categories of books I am reading from and the specific books I've picked out. I'm still filling out the 52 as I go, but there's probably 30, 35 there. And uh, each week I am dropping my biggest golden nugget in a micro episode of the show. And so here we are with The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. Now, I, this is a reread for me as some of the books are on this list. So this is the first reread of the year. I read this when it came out in 2019 uh, and absolutely blew me away um, because it was a book absolutely needed for its time. And it was actually ahead of its time, sadly, because the year after that, the whole world went bonkers with COVID and things have only gotten crazier. What I want to do in this um, mini episode is share with you the one sentence that to me sums up the core message of this book and the biggest golden nugget, and then unpack a little bit of how this can apply to you and to me. Uh, John Mark Comer is a pastor. He's an author. Uh, So it's written in a way from a Christian perspective. It's written to the Christian But this is one of those rare books uh, written by a Christian to Christians that actually, if you're not a person of faith or you have a different faith, you would 100% resonate with because it's really a human book. Um, So depending on whether Jesus is a trigger word for you or not, I hope it's not because there's so much good for you in this book. Um, It is one of those crossover books that has just taken the world by storm, um, but definitely within the church. But it is a book needed for the modern person. So here is the sentence that to me gets it. If there's a secret to happiness, it's simple. Presence in the moment. The more present we are to the now, the more joy we tap into. And the thing he is saying in this book is that the thing that's getting in the way of presence in the moment, which leads to joy and happiness, is hurry. We have hurry sickness. We are in a hurry. Everything is fast. There's an entire chapter of the book called The History of Speed, and it is depressing, absolutely depressing, but fascinating to see just how much has changed in the last 70 years, even the last 50 years, which is literally a generation or two. There's insane speed. And another good book that I'm probably going to add to the list now that I'm saying it out loud that I need to reread again and again, and we should all read is Margin. The book Margin is phenomenal, and um, I'm blanking on his name. He's a doctor that wrote it, and he talks about progress, and he says the modern definition of progress, the modern reality of progress, because you think of progress as a good thing, but the way he defines progress is more and more of everything faster and faster. And I think that's what John Mark Comer unpacks in this book as the problem is There is more and more of everything, more social media, more email, more people to know, more friends, more chat groups, more Voxer groups, more Facebook groups, more social media followers, more opportunity than ever before. There's more wealth to be had, and it's coming at you faster and faster and faster, which means more problems, more relational hiccups, more weight to carry. The idea that I have now hundreds, if not thousands of quote-unquote friends that I am emotionally available for or could be emotionally available for or could be interrupted in a moment's notice from someone I haven't talked to in three years, but we can, they can interrupt the, the now. And it's a relationship that I have some, some responsibility for. I'm not saying I need to. The fact that all of this is happening is just adding to the weight. So what is the solution? Slow down. Slow down. He shares four practices based off of the life of Jesus because Jesus was never in a hurry. And yet Jesus is the most influential influencer in the history of the world. We literally have changed our calendar around his birth. Literally, he started a massive religion. Literally, he has changed the course of history. So the most influential influencer, and he did all of that in just three years of public ministry. 
he was slowly biding his time to age 30, and then he only did three three years on the scene. And he did miracles. He he changed the world. He he did incredible. He was a teacher. He was more than all of those things. And he was never in a hurry. And so the four practices John Mark Homer shares, silence, or solitude, basically, moments alone in the quiet, Sabbath, having that full day off. We just talked about it this week. I had a whole episode on, on Alex Hermosi's uh, ridiculous comment about we don't need weekends. You absolutely do. You at least need one day. Sabbath, and what Sabbath really is, and the Jews have, have done this well, and Jesus modeled this and affirmed it, simplicity, minimalism, simple living, the less physical clutter, the less emotional clutter, the less your, your spirit is cluttered, right? And then slowing, just literally walking slower, driving slower, getting in the slow lane in the supermarket. Four practices that are modeled after the life of Jesus that will help us ruthlessly eliminate hurry, which the whole point of that is so that we can be more present in the moment, whether it's your work, whether it's with your family. I'll leave you with this line. He quotes Walter Adams, who was the spiritual director to C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia and Mere Christianity and a bunch of other incredible books. To walk with Jesus is to walk with a slow, unhurried pace. Hurry is the death of prayer and only impedes and spoils our work. It never advances it. I love this. If you're not a spiritual person, that's fine. Ignore the the Jesus language. But when has hurrying ever advanced your work or improved the quality? It usually only impedes or spoils it. So... If you want more joy in your life, you got to be more present. To be more present, you have to ruthlessly eliminate hurry. And the best way to do that is to focus on four practices. Solitude, Sabbath, taking that day off, just completely unplugging, simple living, simplicity, and slowing down. There it is, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, John Mark Comer, an absolute must read. It reads faster than it looks. I hope you've enjoyed these micro episodes. Let me know if you have read the book and what your takeaways were as well. And if you're joining me on the 52 book challenge, I'll link to uh, that initial video below as well. If you're listening to the podcast, I'll link to that as well. That episode where I explain the challenge a bit more. Have an amazing weekend and we'll see you on next week's micro episode as well. Mm -hmm.